Hello, welcome. My name is Stuart Lewis, I'm with Scientrific, and today we're going to be doing a slight build on something that we did in one of my previous videos. In that video, we were looking at the uh, chlorophyll inside of spinach leaves that we managed to gain out of it, and we used the GoDirect spectrophotometer in order to measure that chlorophyll. And we also used the fluorescent to look at the specific peaks as well. Today, we will be doing looking at chlorophyll, but this time we'll be looking at it in different grades of olive oil. So I have three different grades. I have extra virgin olive oil, I have just a standard olive oil, and I have, this one says, light taste olive oil. I have spectral analysis ready to go, so how about we get into it? I'll just connect the spectrophotometer to spectral analysis to begin with. So the blue light's flashing, which means it's sending out the signal for Bluetooth. Over here on spectral analysis, I'll go to connect a spectrophotometer. I will connect there. Now that it's connected, I'll go to done. Now, instead of looking at the absorbance peaks, I'm going to jump straight to fluorescence. We're going to send a UV wavelength through our cuvettes in order to look at the peaks that we get back from it, because chlorophyll does fluoresce. So I'll go to Wavelength sp Full Spectrum. Now, the excitation wavelength for chlorophyll is actually 405. So I'll change it there, and we'll have a little look at our integration time as we go along. So the first thing I'm going to do is hit Collect. Right now, since we have nothing in there, there's nothing to see. So I'm going to take our first cuvette, which has the light taste olive oil. We'll pop that in. Something you may notice is that it is glowing a little bit there as it does fluoresce. But we only have this tiny peak on the screen. So what I'll do, since I want the peak to be a little bit taller, I'm going to change the setting and the integration time. Let's change it just to 100. And there we go, we have a nicer peak. So I'll stop that one. And there's our peak. The next step, of course, I'm going to take out this one. I'm going to put in our standard olive oil. And hit collect. As you can see, out of this excitation peak, which is chlorophyll, we're getting a much higher one this time. We're also getting some slight peaks over here, but these are the main ones we'll watch. So I'll hit stop again. Now for our last one, the extra version olive oil. Pop that in there. And if you look carefully, and I'll carefully take the lid off, you'll actually see that unlike the other ones, which had a slight blue tinge, this one has a red tinge. So the wavelength has gone in through the blue part of the spectrum, excited the molecules, and then it's fluorescing at red. Very noticeable with this one. We'll just pop that back on, hit collect. And you get that wonderful peak there. Again, I'll hit stop. Okay, so you can see from the graph very beautifully that there are those three different peaks. So we can say for sure that the light taste olive oil has the least amount of chlorophyll, and it does. This is pretty much uh, the process is where it has all the dregs and slurry after they've done these two. The extra virgin olive oil is done with the first press, so it has the highest level of course through its process. And this one is, of course, in the middle. It's uh, the, the remainder. All up, they do all look very similar in color. They're all yellows. However, you can definitely see this one is a much deeper yellow because of the level of chlorophyll. Now, something else we could do with this data, if we wanted to, is we could actually make a standardized curve 
We could then do a Beer's Law curve if we knew the amount of chlorophyll that we were doing. And then you could grade it, the level of chlorophyll that these have on top of it. Then you could grab any olive oil from any supermarket and start to do that measurement of chlorophyll. You could potentially even look at it for plants as well. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this. I know I have. If you do have any queries, please feel free to contact me on the following email address.